What's up YouTube? Today we're going to talk about credit scores and what newcomers to Canada or new immigrants need or should be aware of before I'm shutting everything down. So stay tuned. So when you're coming to Canada, everyone, um, no matter where you're coming from in the world, you are going to have a credit score from your mother country, let's call it, from your birth country. Um, that's going to consist of multiple things that you've acquired over the years um, due to your financial history. Um, so when you're coming to Canada, that credit score is non-transferable. Um, it is not going to be recognized in a sense that will not help give you a better credit score when you arrive in Canada, just off the bat, just so you know. We have recently found in terms of... Um, maintaining that or just, just things to be aware of when you're coming to Canada yes you need to pay off all your debts or as much of your debts as possible before you come because this will impact um, getting a mortgage things like that as a few of you have asked in terms of this which so when I left England I had uh, a car in finance I had uh, some credit cards and I had some student overdrafts the majority of them were all paid off when I came, um, and that was that. I didn't think I needed anything more. I thought the paid off, bum bum, happy days. We've recently been trying to get a mortgage. It's all gone through fine, luckily enough for us. However, when you, I would advise to always get your credit score, get your credit report, credit score before you leave England within the last few weeks, just so it is up to date as possible. And then on that report, it will give you a breakdown of your history, things like finance, credit cards, stuff like that. Now, obviously, pay them off if you can do before coming. And then if not, obviously, still pay them off. But when you are going to obtain credit or finance or a mortgage, just like we did in our case, they are going to have to be paid off for sure. Um, but at the same time, if you are doing it before coming to Canada, ensure that you get a letter um, and your most like final statement saying that that account is closed or that the account is zeroed, that there is no standing arrears. Um, because that's something we found out. Um, it wasn't too much of a problem obtaining uh, that information from like American Express or whoever your provider is. But... It was an inconvenience, which if we could have been prepared for, would have been quite helpful not um, having to worry about. So yeah, every account that you have and that you close or finish paying off, just get a confirmation letter from them that, yep, it's zeroed, it's done. If you are keeping it open, that again should be fine. But just every month when you get your statement saying it's zeroed, just save a PDF version of it. So when you do eventually go for... Um, getting a mortgage or something you've got that proof of all these statements again I believe you're better off having too much information than not enough and then it being stressful and a whole rigmarole trying to get that information because um, I had to get up at like 4am one day to call the car finance people in England um, just to get the confirmation letter saying that yes it had been paid off like two years ago uh, and that there was no arrears so that was a little bit annoying. So yeah, just make sure that you are getting them letters saying that everything's zeroed. Um, i trying to think what else was there. Get your credit report, get your credit score, touch wood, it's good. Um, also as well, your bank statements from the UK. Keep all them again just showing um, good kind of account use, good kind of account history. As well as, um, I've just gone blank. Um, I've lost it. I have, oh, that was it. So, when you are coming to Canada, obviously we all hope that it goes smoothly and that it, the move is forever. Now, obviously things don't always go to plan. So, one thing I recently found out as well is when you're moving to from another country to another country, yes, you want to close things. Obviously, you don't want to be paying fees for things that you aren't using, but... In things like in terms of like your bank accounts and maybe a credit card if there's no fees on it do not close don't like cancel it because one thing I found out with like UK credit scores is it's obviously acquired through credit cards 
finance, so on and so on. And if you close everything when you leave, that also affects your credit score. Now, when you go to get a mortgage, they may choose to run an international um, credit report to obtain um, your UK credit score once you've um, landed here or kind of when you're trying to obtain whatever you want. So if you've obviously closed absolutely everything, that credit score will have dived. Now that is fine because at point of leaving England, you've got this good one, this most recent, well, the most recent one prior to you leaving um, that will keep everything up to date and it should show like a steady decline because your UK credit score will steadily decline over the months and years when you're not using credit per se uh, because there's then gaps in your credit. So yeah, the main takeaway guys from this is like I say, get the credit report, get the credit score like a couple of weeks before you go. Again, it's okay if things aren't paid off when you're coming, but just make sure that when you're thinking of um, applying more so for a mortgage to be honest because we got the car finance and no trouble um, but yeah more so when you're planning on um, applying for a mortgage just get them letters from the banks and the providers and everything saying that they're zeroed because the the two weeks that we had to try get everything it was just crazy and it was a little bit of a pain in the backside which I wish if I had known beforehand I could have got all of that and it wouldn't have been an issue um, yeah, and like I say, close everything you don't need that isn't essential, but do keep like a bank account open and something like that, just so you can still, you know, transfer funds if you need to go back or anything like that. You don't want to be completely disconnected because when you go back or if you have to go back, it's going to be a nightmare. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. I have covered a few things before about credit and stuff like that in my previous video, so it might just be worth checking them out. But like I say, I just really wanted to get this out there about them letters because it can be a bit stressful trying to get them. So, oh, and on that note, if you are having to make calls or anything back to England, rather than paying ridiculous fees um, through a provider or whatever, use Skype. Now I say use Skype if you've got a phone or a laptop because you can get like, I think it's 400 UK minutes for $4, which for me has been the godsend of like being able to still communicate back with England at a uh, cost effective rate. So yeah, hope that helps everyone. Any questions, just drop them down below. And yeah, I hope you found this useful as always. See you in a while.